Welcome back. I'm Courtney and this is The Accounting Struggle, where we speak about our struggles with accounting openly and honestly. We do not run from them. And welcome back. If you are a returning subscriber or just a returning visitor, it's great to have you. Um, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. And I just want to quickly say thank you so much to everybody who um, gave me feedback on my last video. I am always pretty open and transparent, but with the last video being black in accounting or being the black person at work, um, I was like especially vulnerable. So I really appreciate all the feedback and just love and light that was sent my way. And I hope that everybody took something great away from it or at least something informative. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you on that. So today's video will be short and sweet. I will not be before you long. I just have a few things. I know that is what every pastor says before they preach a very long sermon. But in my case, I'm being honest. I really will not be before you long. I just have a few things. I wanted to clarify, um, in today's video, the difference between a few different accounting organizations that are very important. These are not like the membership organizations. I'll talk about that in another video, but today I just wanted to clarify or make some distinctions between a few accounting organizations that are easily confused for one another and that we mix up a lot. If you are going to be studying for the CPA exam, if you're planning to go um, down that road, <laughs> down that path, then there are a couple different organizations that you will have to come in contact with. And I remember this being especially confusing for me when I was on the journey. So I just wanted to make a quick video where I clarify what the different ones are. So first there's the AICPA. The AICPA is the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. So the AICPA, though that's the, those are the big dogs. That is who creates the CPA exam. They come up with all the content. So if you are taking it, if you're in the process of studying right now and you're like, oh my God, who wrote these questions that are five paragraphs long and ridiculously impossible to solve? That's the AICPA. So take that up with them. Um, so they do that and they also grade the exam. So those people are super important. And they also, the AICPA is also responsible for administering CPE and the ethics course so at the end once you're done and you've finished all four sections of the exam there's an ethics portion of the exam that you take as well in order to get licensed um, i believe that's a requirement in all 50 states but i know for a fact that i had to do it and that comes from the aicpa so they they do all types of um, being a member of the aicpa is something that you do once you become a cpa you don't have to but it is an option you do have to be a CPA first before you become a member. But if you're trying to differentiate between, okay, well, who is the one who's actually making the exam? Who Like, there's so many different ones. I'm so confused. This is a lot. The AICPA makes the exam. They grade the exam. And they do a lot of the CPE, which is the Continuing Professional Education. You are required to get at least 120 CPE hours each every three years so i believe there's a specific breakdown that is state by state so i will not go into that but it is 120 credit hours every three years the aicpa is where you go to track your cpe Woo, this gets real confusing so the aicpa is where you track your cpe credits each year every time you're going and taking a you know three hour seminar or anything that you're doing where you're getting CPE continuing professional education credits you're tracking that through the AICPA but that's once you've passed so if you're still in the study portion and you're still on the journey to getting your CPA license the AICPA that's the group of people who are responsible for all of your misery next is the state board of accountancy so every state has their own state board of accountancy i live in virginia mine is the virginia state board of accountancy this is where you will go to apply for the cpa exam so if you've decided hey girl i want to be a cpa that's the life that i'm about now and i'm going to go down that path um Congratulations, welcome. But you will go to your state board of accountancy, you will figure out what all the requirements are, what the education requirements are, all of that jazz. And then you would apply and pay for um, your application to apply to sit for the exam. So the state board of accountancy 
for your state, wherever you want to, you know, apply and get licensed, they are going to review your application. They're going to determine if you meet the education requirements for your state. Typically, the requirements are 150 credit hours, and there's a specific amount that you have to have in accounting. Um, I won't go through the breakdowns of all these because it does vary state to state. Some states don't require that additional 30 credit hours and they allow you to have 120, but many states, the state that I'm in and most states that I know of are 150 credit hours. So the State Board of Accountancy is that's who is going to be responsible for looking over your application. Once you've completed the CPA exam, they verify your completion, they verify that you have the or meet the education requirements to now become licensed and they also verify that you meet the work experience requirements because as you may know or maybe you don't know to become licensed as a cpa is not just simply passing the exam that's the portion that everyone speaks on because it is the hardest you do still have to have a certain amount of hours in professional accounting work under your belt and you have to meet the education requirements as well so once they verify all of that then this is also the organization who is responsible for issuing your license so when you get your cpa license and the gates of heaven open um you will see that that is signed or issued by whatever state you live in, Board of Accountancy. And their name is gonna be on your license. All the board of directors are gonna sign it. It's gonna be pretty, it's gonna have a little gold seal, and it's gonna be a moment. But those are the people who do that. So the State Board of Accountancy is also responsible for any disciplinary action. So if there is a case brought against you or you need to bring a case against another CPA, um, all of that information is reviewed by the board. They go in and they say, oh no, honey, she was out here cutting up on social media. It is a whole thing. It is a scandal. She's done. And that's their determination. So that's something else that they're responsible for doing, reviewing those types of cases, um, looking through all the information. And then it is very important to note, um, not that you don't already know this because I know you do, but you're, you're bound to certain ethical behaviors. So you do want to be mindful of um, how you're out here, you know, behaving in these streets because that information can always make its way back to the state board and they can always say, even though it might not be an accounting law that you're breaking, if you're doing something that's completely unethical and they're just not down with that, yeah, that's it. Um, so don't be out here cutting up. The streets are always watching and that is just something that you wanna keep at the top of mind. So at, you'll notice every time you go to do an application, either for applying to take the CPA exam or once you're done taking it, applying for your license, they're always gonna ask you a series of questions like, have you recently been in trouble? Have you been out here selling drugs and moving weight? They'll ask you a series of those types of questions because they want to make sure that you qualify, not just based on have you passed, but also, are you out here cutting up? So the State Board of Accountancy are the people who say whether or not you qualify to take the exam and then they give you the exam, and then they make sure you keep it. Now, there's also NASBA. NASBA is the National Association of State Board Accountancy. So they're basically like the mom of all the state boards because there's so many different state boards because there's so many different states. The National Association just kind of bundles it all up. So if you go to their website and you click on whatever state you're trying to get licensed in, they'll have all the different information about what your state's requirements are and so forth and so on. So NASBA is where you go to check your scores once you are, you know, you took your exam, you're logging in, and I literally can see NASBA's logo in my mind and I still get anxiety because I get those feelings of like, oh my God, did I pass it or not? Nope, I didn't. Oh my God, I did. All of that comes rushing back to me, but NASBA is where you would go to check your scores. Now, they do not, Get, they don't receive scores from every single state. Some states are like, no, NASBA, actually we want our people to check their scores here. So NASBA receives most of the scores, but they don't receive all of them. So you do have to go to their website to determine if your state issues scores to NASBA. But NASBA is the one that is responsible for issuing your NTS, which is your notice to schedule. Okay, so once you go to your state board of accountancy and you apply to take the exam and they say yay or nay, yay, we like you, you can sit with us, you can take the exam, then you go and you apply for a notice to 
schedule. A notice to schedule just basically says, here's your piece of paper saying that you can take this section of the exam and that comes from NASBA, the National Association of State Board of Accountancy. So once you get your NTS, which is your notice to schedule, You'll go and you'll sit for the exam at the Prometric Center, which we'll get to in a second. You'll take the exam, your palms will be sweaty, life will go on after the exam though. And then a few weeks later or however long it takes for that section, you'll check your scores. That you will do on NASBA. NASBA has most of everyone's scores. They're, like I said before, some people don't. Some states do not send scores to NASBA. You have to go directly to their website. but. For a lot of states, you go to NASBA, you check your score, see if you passed, and that's the game. Now the Prometrics Testing Center, I don't think that this one gets looped in because the word accounting is not in it, so it's pretty easy to differentiate. But just to give you a little aside, the Prometrics Testing Center is just simply for administering the test. That's it. That's all they do. You come in, you bring your notice to schedule, you fingerprint, a draw blood, all that good stuff. You go into the test center, you take your exam, and then that's all they're responsible for. Um, so they don't have anything to do with what's on the exam. They do all different types of state board exams there. It's not even like a CPA thing, but you do need your notice to schedule when you go to the Prometrics Testing Center, also when you go to their website to schedule your exam. So just wanted to throw that in there in case there was any confusion on what that portion was. So just to give a brief overview, I know that this can be kind of confusing at least i know it was for me and i went through the process of applying and reapplying and taking it and paying this and all these different websites and all these different logins and it was very confusing so i'm just going to swoop back over it and give you another overview so here are the steps so step one you will apply for sitting for the cpa exam you do this with the state board of accountancy your state board whatever state you're in Step two is they say yes or no, you can sit with us or you cannot sit with us. If you meet all the qualifications, you can sit with them and they will then say, okay, great, we like you, apply for your notice to schedule, which is your NTS. That comes from NASBA, which is the National Association for State Board of Accountancy. NASBA issues your NTS and then they say, great, you're ready to take this section of the exam. Here's your little letter that says you can take it, which is your notice to schedule, your NTS. You will take that, step three, and you will go to the Prometrics testing website. You will find your city, wherever your nearest um, testing center is. You will put in all of the information and you will schedule your exam. Step four is taking your exam. So when you take your exam, you are taking an exam that is written and graded by the AICPA, which is the Association for International Certified Professional Accountants. Now you've taken your exam, you're ready to relax, you've finally got that section behind you, and you want to check your scores because now they're available. So you go and you check your scores nine times out of ten you're going to go to nasba's website if you look there and they're like oh we don't have your scores we don't know anything about that then you would need to go and find out who has your scores it's probably your state board not every state board is going to issue them to nasba most do you just have to go through nasba's website to determine if your state is one of those states that's trying to be difficult or not so you check your scores you see that you passed it was your last section life is great you're done but not quite step six because the last step was step five. So step six is you will go and you will apply for licensure. So you will do that with your state board of accountancy. Your state board of accountancy will look through and they will say, do you have enough hours and experience? Do you really have the education you said you had? Um, and then they'll just verify that you actually passed all the sections of the exam and you met all the requirements and you're not, you know, out here killing people or doing anything crazy that they know of. And then once you do that, you're licensed, they issue it to you, it comes in the mail. You might even get a letter from your governor, I know I did. Um, and then you're done, you're a CPA. So those are the three different main organizations. I threw in the Prometrics Testing Center too, just for a little, you know, extra sauce. So that's all I have for today. Like I said, short and sweet. I hope that this was helpful and cleared some things up. I know it was really confusing to me when I was on this journey, but hopefully this helps. Um, if not, let me know in the comments if you have anything else that I can clarify 
whatever else is still not clicking but i feel like that should help um also thank you so much for watching and coming back each week if you like it here please go ahead and subscribe you know i'm here each wednesday except for the wednesdays where i just cannot make it but thank you so much for watching i appreciate your time and i hope you have a great weekend and yeah happy juneteenth and i will see you guys in the next video bye